Hey guys, it's uh, Carter again. Um, tonight I will be bringing you a video on how to update both the Immersion RC Easy UHF receiver and the transmitter. Um, this is the uh, standard module. The, or standard module, I don't know. It's the box module. And that uh, the receiver is the diversity, but the steps I'm showing you should work with both um, the JR module and any other receivers you want to do. So uh, let's get to the computer and uh, uh, learn how to update it. So to begin, we are going to uh, right click here, new window. So we're just going to open up whatever web browser you want. Um, keep in mind, guys, you can't use a Mac computer. Um, it has to be a Windows computer. All the files are going to be XE, and unfortunately, Apple won't read those files. So it has to be Windows. Um, so if you're a Mac guy, sorry. You'll have to borrow a friend's computer or something, or dual boot anything like that. Anyway, once we've opened up this, we'll go to immersionrc.com and once we're at the home, you can see here, we'll go to products. Okay, so we'll scroll down a tiny bit and I'm going to be updating the receiver first, so we'll uh, click on the receiver. Then once you've gone to the uh, product you want, you just scroll down here. And uh, scrolling on this website is kind of weird. But anyway, go down here, click firmware slash downloads. And you're going to want to get this one and the one down here. So first we get the firmware like this. Click it. And it's a zip file. So we'll save that. It'll start downloading. Then we also need the Immersion RC tools. So we'll save that as well. And now those both downloading, we can close up this window here. And uh, then open up the files. So once you're here, you can uh, scroll down. And we'll see down here, local disk C. Program files x86. And immersion RC. In here we have immersion RC tools. And all of these are already in here. Um, there we go. Okay. So I already had that in there. Um, let's just say you didn't have these uh, all this firmware in here already. Basically what you'd go to or what you'd do is you'd come here and you open up this and then you can see all these files here are like this. So first you click here you'd say extract all and extract and it's extracting. So it's extracted all these files. Now what you do is you'd uh, just select all these and drag down and if we can go down a little further local drive C x86 and the merge RC so then you'd simply uh, if we can get these again go here get all these and you basically just uh, drag them into Immersion RC um, like that. Um, you can see I've already done that so I don't want to do that so I'll just close this. Uh, but if you go into Immersion RC tools you'll see this. You can open this up. And this is actually the tool itself. So once we've done this um, You'll take your USB cord. This is a standard mini USB cord. And uh, let me just show you real quick. I plug this in. 
And one quick thing, if you just plug this straight in, you'll see on here you just get a solid red light. And basically, that doesn't work. That just means that it's getting power, but it's not really recognized as anything. Um, so what you'll need to do is somehow hold down this bind switch on here while you plug this in. But as you can see, no lights coming on. So after some trial and error, I found that this wasn't working. Um, and I found that my GoPro cable uh, worked quite well and did the job for me. So I don't know if this is just a bad cable or what, but if your cable doesn't work, see if you can find a GoPro cable and that should work. Anyway, um, before you do any more things with, uh, with this program, you just close this out for a second. And uh, you'll need to go down here. Let's see, actually go up and go into your device manager. So we're going to click manage and then go into the device manager. So once you're in the device manager, uh, you can see there's all this stuff here. So basically, um, if we go here, we'll plug in our cable. And now watch this. We'll actually watch two things. One, uh, when I hold this bind button down now, if I can reach in there and get it, and plug this in. One, you'll notice that it starts flashing now instead of just not showing up at all. And then two, you'll notice that this flashed. Um, and so basically what you can do is sometimes it'll show up in different places I've noticed um, but it will either be under COM ports or USB devices so you can see it's right here so sometimes it can be tricky to find but should either be under USB or COM, com ports so anyway once you have found it uh, you will update the driver software and browse my computer. Uh, basically, you want to select Program Files, Immersion RC, and Immersion RC Tools. You want it to be in Immersion RC Tools, um, just because you know where it will be and everything will be together. And you can say Next, and Windows has determined driver software is up to date. So basically, um, if you've already updated anything, this should be up to date. But if it's new, you might need to update it. So that's good. It's up to date. Um, let me just show you real quick. If you plug this in, that light goes solid. So it still will... Actually, no, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Yeah, so if you if you plug this in without pushing the bind button, it'll show up under COM ports now. So it's like that. Um, but I've heard that sometimes it won't work if you plug it directly in without pushing the bind button. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. Just open up this program here. So now it's it's showing the COM port. Um, But see, if you go into Update Firmware, this button is is dark gray and you can't click it. So that's even though even though it's reading this, you can't update the firmware, which is what you want to do. So this is why you have to push the bind button. Basically, once you push the bind button, if we uh, if we do that again. and it'll go flashing again. Basically now you can see no device found and you're like okay well that's not working but if you see here check it out now this update firmware is working. So pushing in the bind button basically allows it to be read by the computer. Um, 
So if you go into configure, you won't be able to do anything. Read settings, you can't do that. But what you do is now you can click update firmware. So you go like this, you'll go and see since you've copied everything already, then everything's already in this place. So you want to go into the firmware. Uh, in my case, it's V1.52. And you'll come down here and find Easy UHF firmware RX8 channel. Um, and unless you're in the UK, just select the one that doesn't say UK. Double click that. And it should say reading and programming. And it'll start the programming. And now look, it's a success. It's perfect. Now if you go into configure, uh, it updated and now you can see it's recognized this. So now you can say read settings from receiver. And now it will work. And now you can see we have the latest firmware, version 1.52, and it's up to date. So that is how you do the update for the receiver and now I can move on to the transmitter okay so for the transmitter it's almost exactly the same basically what you're gonna do is plug this in and again it might be a little harder to see with me doing this but you need to push in the failsafe slash binding button um, and then here is the USB down here so you're going to push this in and then plug that in down here like that. So you can see it's plugged in and once it's in it'll be kind of annoying because it'll be beeping but that is what you should get. Now you go here into manager and device manager and you'll see ports and com ports. Okay, so com port six, it looks like it's recognizing. Um, let's see if it's working. Okay, so it's recognizing the com port, which probably means that if we go into here, program, yeah, we can't read it. So I must have done something wrong. So we'll try that again. We'll uh, take that out and push in the bind button and plug in the USB. Let's see if that works now. All right, so looks like that's not working. Um, OK, easy UHF, TX not detected. Turn into high power, hold button, and attach USB port. Okay, so that was in low power. We'll turn it to high power and repeat the process. Hold the bind button and plug in. And there we go. Now it should be recognizing it. So now it's not beeping, it's just flashing like this. And that is actually what we want. We don't want it to be beeping. As you can see, the firmware is now available to be hit. We'll just click that now. And then you can see we have all these. So what we want is the Easy UHF firmware TX500 milliwatt. So we'll click that. It'll say reading, programming, and then it'll program just like the RX did. And now it says success. So now if you want, you can go into configure. You can say refresh down here. 
now it'll recognize it and now you can read settings from the transmitter um, version 1.52 okay so basically you can see all this different stuff the main thing to see is that it's the same version as your RX if the firmware version is not the same it will not bind so you just need to make sure it's the same version firmware other than that you'll want the frequency band to be the same um, and of course head tracking program blah 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 there's all this stuff but the main thing is that it's the same version firmware and once it's updated you can basically unplug it and it should be done that's all there is to it and now you should be ready to bind okay so just a few key things here is uh, one you need a Windows computer um, Mac will not read exe files two um, like I said some USB cables might not work. I know this GoPro cable does. So if you can't find a USB cable that works, try a GoPro cable. I'm not sure if it's just a bad cable or what. Um, and then also, like I said, after you've downloaded the firmware, if you plug in the USB port to either the receiver or the transmitter without pressing down the bind button, it will recognize it as a COM port but you can't do anything with it in the actual immersion RC tools. So what you need to do is, as you saw, push down the bind button, then plug the USB in. Or in the case of the transmitter, you need to have it on high power um, when you push the bind button and plug it in. As you saw, I did it on low power, and it simply told me what I needed to do, so that was easy enough. Um, other than that, you should be ready to bind. I have uh, seen people having trouble with binding, so I'll probably post a video on how to bind it uh, within the next few days. Um, but that's how to update the firmware. A few uh, quick tips that you might not have known trying to do it yourself. So, hope that helped, and uh, hope you're up able to uh, update the firmware. So, that's all for that video, and. Hope you enjoyed it and hope it helped you. See you next time.